In the last video, we defined a linear function as an equation that deals with the constant rate of change. And we used the function c equals 200d plus 2500 to describe the cost of taking your band on tour. In this video, we will continue working with linear functions, building tables, and plotting points to make a graph. By the end of this video, we will become familiar with an important formula, y equals mx plus b. As you know, you can't be famous without adoring fans. So imagine that your band has set up a MathSpace fan page to keep track of how your fan club grows while you're on tour. Let's say that at the beginning of the tour, you only had three fans on your MathSpace page. But while on tour, you notice that you're adding fans at a constant rate of two fans per day. The question is, how many fans will your MathSpace page have on any given day of the tour? To figure this out, let's first assign some variables for this function. For the purpose of graphing, we'll use y for the total number of fans and x for the number of days on tour. Therefore, the function would be y equals 2x plus 3. In this function, the constant rate of change is two new fans per day with an initial amount of three fans. Let's build a table to see some number values and get to some graphing. Now let's plot the points from our table. What do you notice about the arrangement of these points? That's right, they make a straight line, which is why we call these linear functions. It's important to notice that all straight lines on a graph represent linear functions. Now let's see if we can find a connection between where the line crosses the y-axis and information presented in the function. You may have noticed that the line crosses the y-axis at 0, 3, and that 3 is the initial number of fans on your MathSpace page. What else do you notice? As mentioned in the previous video, linear functions reflect a constant rate of change. Let's take a look at how rate of change is reflected in this graph. Notice that between the first two pairs of points, we have moved up two fans as we moved over one day. This reflects that with every day that passes, you get two more fans. In the last pair of points, you will notice that you got four new fans in two days. This is the same rate of change. You may be thinking that this looks a lot like rise over run from a previous video on slope. In fact, slope is the constant rate of change. Now notice where the two r slope appears in the function. Now let's imagine that your shows are really rocking and you're able to add fans at a rate of five per day. Our function changes to this, y equals five x plus three. Notice how the line is steeper. It has a greater slope, which shows the increased rate of change. Now let's look at what happens when we change the initial amount of fans. Let's say we start the tour with 10 fans. Notice how the line shifted up and the new y-intercept is 0, 10. So what would a negative slope mean about your band's total number of fans? For example, y equals negative 2x plus 10. In this scenario, you started the tour with 10 fans, but we're losing them at a constant rate of two fans per day. Maybe those matching green suits weren't such a good idea. The y-intercept is exactly where we expect it to be, 0, 10. And the negative slope, the rate of change, is reflected in the decreasing line. This brings us to the popular formula we mentioned at the beginning of this video, y equals mx plus b the slope-intercept form of linear functions, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. This is a nifty formula for shortcut graphing without making a table. Let's look at how to quickly graph y equals 2 thirds x minus 5. We always plot the y-intercept first. From there, we move the way our slope is telling us to move. In this case, up 2 and over 3. Connect the dots and you're done. Let's look at one more example. Take y equals negative 5 halves x plus 1. Again, you're going to start by graphing the y-intercept, the plus 1. 
From there, we're going to move the way our slope is telling us to move. That's down five and over two. Connect your dots and you're done. In this video, we learned that the initial amount and y-intercept are the same, and that the constant rate of change and slope are also the same. Finally, we discovered the value of y equals mx plus b, and how its form can quickly help us make a graph. In the next video, we will focus on rewriting linear functions into the slope-intercept form, and writing a function represented in a graph.